We're not here for a long time. Just a good time. You are now listening to the C and J Sports and Beer Podcast. Brought to you by Google Plus Hangouts on Air. Charlie and Jared. Are you ready? Let's start the show. Maybe I might call the later. No rush. She's a slam beat girl from Decatur. Decatur. When we first spoke, I could tell she had flavor. My voice box smelled like green now or later. Oh, uh, what's up? Got me feeling like an AC. Cruising with the top down, the weather still amazes me. God has been good, so I'ma keep taking dates with her. But if she cheat on me, I promise I'ma find better. They say the yolks are cold, shake with an attitude that is true, but it's expensive mm. if I had to move. So I might do Texas yeah. if I had to choose. Huh. A lot of people tell me that the rain must be zoo, but shoot, I'm mm. in the mood for a better Maybe. view. You must be tripping yeah. if you think this is not a better view. And I gotta see, see hey, you the hottest yeah. for you my know AC what? ladies, no. my distance. Yeah, that ain't gonna work. You know what? I, you know what? I think the Blue Jays is gonna work today. I think the Toronto Blue Jays will be in the World Series. But this has nothing to do with baseball, ladies and gentlemen. This is the C and J Sports and Beer Podcast coming at you with the Midnight Hour Prediction Show. And that's college predictions and that's NFL predictions. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. The boys are back. We're ready to have fun. We're ready to have a good time. And let me just tell you, if you want to catch up with the new content that we're going to be providing, same old social media outlets, Facebook, Tumblr, Google Plus, YouTube, aka YouTube Live, SoundCloud and iTunes. In those search bars, just type in CNJ Sports and Beer Podcast. You will find us. And if you want to hit us up on Twitter, if you are a Twitter head, you are a person who's always on Twitter, go ahead and hit us up. That's at CJ Sports Beer Pod. Once again, at CJ Sports Beer Pod. Where to start? I mean, honestly, I don't know where to start. And I don't want to get ahead of myself because we're planning to produced a great show come Tuesday night. Yes, we switched from from Monday to Wednesday. Now at Tuesday, but you know what? Life circumstances put you in situations to go with the flow and make changes. So hey, the boys will be back on Tuesday. Um, but today I'm going to be providing you guys with my Sunday and my, my Saturday picks or wait, my Saturday and my Sunday picks because Saturday comes before Sunday. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be giving you a list of games I'm going to be watching or I'm going to try to to or or attempt to watch on Sunday and a few NFL games on Saturday. Uh, hold up. Let's let's we do that all over it. Back that all the way up. Hey, Lord, I have- Here we go. I am going to be providing you with my Saturday college football picks and my Sunday NFL picks. I have Xfinity provided by Comcast. So here in the Pacific Northwest with the rain pouring down, there's not a lot I can do tomorrow. So I may, I may be a couch potato and I may sit on my couch and attempt to watch all 32 games tomorrow. All 32 games tomorrow. Sit your $5 ass down before I make change. No, I'm not going to sit and watch all 32 games tomorrow. But there are a few games that I'm, I'm, I guess you can say I'm interested in taking a look at or, or interested in seeing the results or interested in giving my opinion on who's going to win or who's going to lose. So we're going to start off with 1-4 and four Illinois versus 2-4 and four Rutgers. Um, I didn't think Lovey Smith and the boys in orange would be this bad. Um, but they are. They are bad. And I'm sure at some point Lovey Smith will turn it around. But if not... He may have to find a new career. So they're bad. I don't wish that on Lovey Smith. He's back in Illinois. I would like to see him be successful, but it stinks watching him and the Illinois football team look like crap. But I am predicting, I am predicting that those boys in orange will get a win against Rutgers on the road. 
I'm thinking the score is going to be some along the lines of 30 to 28. Um, will it be quarterback Wes Lunt behind center? Will it be quarterback Chase Crouch behind center? I don't know. Uh, what I do know, the Scarlet Knights have been shut out in their last two games. They got beat down by Ohio State. They got beat down by Michigan. Hold on, wait a second. They got beat down by the fuck eyes. I forgot to add that. They got beat down by the fuck eyes, aka Ohio State. They got beat down by my Michigan Wolverines. Um, so they're on like a three game skid. Um, and I don't believe in them and I don't like them like I like that Illinois team and I like Lovey Smith. So you know what? I'm predicting a win for Illinois football 30-28 against Rutgers. The next game I'm going to pay close attention to is going to be number 20 West Virginia at Texas Tech. This is a very intriguing matchup to me. Um, I guess why is intriguing is because West Virginia is sitting at 4-0. Texas Tech is 3-2. Um, Texas Tech is coming off a loss at K-State, um, looking to bounce back against West Virginia, um, who barely beat, barely, and I mean barely, barely beat K-State, and they also barely beat BYU. I'm taking Texas Tech because they're at home, and this will be West Virginia's first game of the season on the road. First game of the season on the road. On the road. On the road. road. Disaster happened in that situation. Um, I think the Mountaineers defense will... I, I think they will, but I also don't think they will hold up like they did in previous weeks at home since they're on the road. So I think their defense is stout. I think their defense is really, 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 really good. However, this is the first time that defense is going to be battle tested and it's going to happen on the road against the team that needs a win so they can get a decent college bowl game towards the end of the season and texas tech isn't as hot as they were last year so i'm rolling with those red raiders to beat the undefeated mountaineers from there we're gonna go and check out some pac-12 football where we have usc versus arizona now check this out as you guys all know if you follow the podcast that we do live streaming now on a new night Tuesday, you know I'm all about the numbers and I like the numbers and and that's one thing that I follow and try to try to try to try to make my point and state my case when I'm talking sports. So check this out here. Under Clay Helton as the full-time coach, USC is 0 and 5 on the road. <laughs> now as the interim coach, he's 2 and 7. And I think streaks are made to be broken. And I'm saying his 0-5 streak will be broken this week. I think USC will get the job done. I think they will rise above 500. I'm predicting a score of 35-21 for the Trojans. This 2016 season isn't shaping up to be a good one for Rich Rod and the Wildcats. So um, they got to work on something down there in Arizona. But it's not going to happen this week against USC. So Arizona, Rich Rod, I liked you when you was at Michigan. I like what you've been doing in Arizona. But this week is going to belong to my man Troy and those Trojans and a team that has so much talent. But they are just discombobulated. And there's just so much trash going on that they need to hurry up and turn around because that's too good of a college football program and a pride university to be looking like trash, dead trash on the field with all that talent. Uh Moving along from there, moving along from there, moving along from there. That's three times, yes. And I guess the reason why I said that three times is because Michigan State is 0-3 in their last three games. After starting 2-0, they're just not the same team. I hate to say it. And I feel sorry for them. But then again, I don't feel sorry for them because I am a Michigan fan. 
And and I think they shouldn't have had their bye week so early because their quarterback situation is a head scratcher. Um, they're not the same team. I can't wait until the 29th so Michigan can give them a beat down. And then they also play Ohio State. They'll get a beat down there. So Michigan State is going to totally fall off the face of the earth. And no one will care about it except for the people who root for the green and white. I feel like I'm falling, falling off the face of the earth. Falling off the face of the earth. Falling off the face of the earth. But with that being said, the Spartans will beat Northwestern. There's no way they're going to lose against Northwestern and drop four in a row. They're going to get to 500. Everything will be fine. Then after that, they'll have a game. And then after that, they'll play Michigan. And that's when all the, 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 the Spartan fans will start talking that trash about last year's game, how we choked, how we couldn't get the win. This year, it's a different story. We are going to get the win, just like you guys are going to get the win tomorrow against Northwestern. And both of y'all suck. So at the end of the day, it's just like, you know, two drunk men beating up a, uh, another drunk man or two drunk men fighting each other. I don't even know if that made sense. That don't make no sense. Now let's move on to an SEC matchup. A matchup between Alabama, Tennessee, number one versus number nine. As bad as I want to see Bama take an L, it's not going to happen. Bama has won nine straight games against Tennessee. They play every year. Win number 10 is going down today because it is the midnight hour at 1230 Pacific Standard Time. So in about, I don't know what the time will be, not 12 hours, but let's just say in 14 and a half, maybe 15 hours Alabama is going to beat Tennessee by the score of 41 to 21. So all I have to say to that is roll tide. Okay. Roll down tide. Bama's not losing. Tennessee is on the upside of things, but you know what? They're just not beating Bama. I don't think anyone is beating Bama um, this season um, unless it's Michigan. Uh, but outside of Michigan, and they probably can't compete with Bama at this point in time, but next year they will, but no one's going to beat Bama because they have a, 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 a great thing going on down there, and most of those players are super, 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 super young. So with that being said, number one, Alabama versus number nine, Tennessee. Alabama wins the games, win the game, um, or I guess you can say games because they've won nine in a row and this will be the 10th win in a row. So Alabama win the game 41 to 21. Moving on from there, we're going to go back to the Pac-12 again and we're going to talk Utah football versus Oregon State football. Now, right now, the Ducks suck. Or like my man Crispin say, the fucks suck. This is the perfect time for the Beavers to compete at a high level, even in a loss. Um, still compete, still go out there, still bring attention to what Gary Anderson is trying to do with that young team. Because when Oregon is back on, all the bandwagon fans are going to come out of the cracks. All of the true fans are going to come out of the cracks. And the media attention in the state of Oregon is going to be on the duck. So... Get it while the getting is good. And with that being said, try to stay away from being the doormat of the Pac-12 North. By doing that, let's try to put together a quality win against Utah at home. Put them in a position to fall out of the top 25 because if I'm not mistaken, they're ranked 21st. And if you guys can beat them, bye-bye Utah. We don't want to see them. And I guess the reason why I don't like Utah because they gave us a win or a loss that we didn't deserve last year. And they almost gift wrapped it us a win, but we had some quarterback issues with the new quarterback and some things that just didn't happen the right way. So whatever, we lost the game. But I still have this nasty taste in my mouth from that Thursday night game against Utah. So at, at the end of the day, Beavers, 
Put yourself in a position to win two in a row. Take care of the Utes um, because next Saturday you're going to play the Huskies and it might be ugly. It might be real ugly. It might be, I mean, like really, really, really ugly. So, you know, you have the good, the bad, the ugly. It was good winning that game last week in overtime. It's going to be bad if you guys don't go out there and get a win today or at least compete at the level to where we can be like, you know what? The Beavers are, they're clawing their way back. It's going to be really ugly when you face Washington next week on the road. I'm going to pray for you, Beavers. I'm going to pray for you, Oregon State. I'm still going to hold it down for you guys, but the good, the bad, the ugly. Just go out there and perform today against Utah. That's all I want to see. The over-under is 47. I'm thinking under. I'm taking the Beavers with the close, wet, muddy win over Utah. What you think about that? How you feel about that? You let me know. If you want to let me know, just hit me up on Twitter at CJ Sports Beer Pie. At CJ Sports Beer Pie. Next, we have, I guess you can say, this is a matchup that was interesting to see last year towards the end of the season. Um, and it's probably interesting to watch tomorrow because both teams aren't what they were last year at about this time. And I'm talking about the Stanford Cardinals versus those Notre Dame fighting irish you know what i'm saying the two teams like i said aren't in the same position as they were last year stanford was five and one at this time last year notre dame was six and one 38 36 was the score last november between the cars and the fighting irish stanford went on to get the w they went on to play in a pac-12 championship game they went on to play in the rose bowl they won both games notre dame finished 10 and 3 losing in the festive or feet oh hold on hold on hold on hold on, hold on. I'm like messing up. I like Mexican is 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 like my favorite food, so it's kind of crazy that I'm messing up the word fiesta. But Ohio State played Notre Dame in a fiesta bowl, and they got beat. Um, so at the end of the day, this is one of those matchups where mm, I like I don't know what to think about this game. You know, my mind my is mind telling, is telling me, me no. to go with the home team, but my body. My body. My body is telling me to roll with the away team. I don't see nothing wrong with picking either team. So I'll pick the winner of each half. Notre Dame outscores Stanford in the first half. Stanford outscores Notre Dame in the second half. Who wins the game? I don't know. But I'm picking a half. So remember, I picked the half of the winner. Notre Dame first. Stanford second. Remember, if you watch that game, you check back here and you let me know what you think. Okay. And from there, we're going to go from there. I think I think we're going to go, I guess the last game of the day for me will be the 5-0 Ohio State Fuck Eyes. Fuck Eyes. Fuck Eyes. Fuck Eyes. Fuck Eyes. Fuck Eyes. Against 4-1 Wisconsin. Um, in 2014, we all know Ohio State blasted Wisconsin 59-0 and punched their ticket to the CFP, college football playoffs. In that game, if you recall, my man Braxton Miller went down early in the season. JT Barrett went down a couple weeks before that or a week before that. And then they inserted my man Cardell Jones, who was the third string quarterback, went out there, made some stuff happen, and Ohio State blasted Wisconsin. It wasn't supposed to be the it wasn't supposed to be like that. But that's how it was. And I think after that, Gary Anderson packed up his things and he came out here to Corvallis. Now he's a head coach of the Oregon State Beavers. But that conversation is about something that's not about what I'm trying to talk about right now. Ohio State has a great team that could possibly do what they did in 2014 tonight against Wisconsin. But eh, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, defense will be the key to winning this game. Um, and I think the best defense will be the individuals wearing 
Cardinal and White. 2017, big win for the home team. Defense is going to win because defenses win championships. And I'm not saying Wisconsin defense is a championship defense, but they looked really good against Michigan. And Michigan has a great defense. That was a defensive battle and it was turnovers on the defensive side that led to the victory for the Wolverines. It was turnovers on the defensive side um, that led to Wisconsin putting fans like me uh, Michigan staff and Michigan players on edge because we could have lost that game, but we didn't. So, like I said, Ohio State will go down and it will make it, it just will make things perfect for the Michigan Wolverines to get to where they need to be, which is the promised land. But they also have to take care of business and stay undefeated. So they have to put the work in, too. So, you know, what I'm saying super conservative on offense, no turnovers, make Ohio State play at your level, and Badgers, you'll be victorious, you'll be victorious, remember, I told you that, remember when you heard it first, I got you guys beating, I got you guys beating Ohio State, just like I had you guys beating LSU, aka LS who, mm, mm, mm. All right, now that we're done with college, I'm going to go into my NFL division games, okay? Division games. Division games. And when I say division games, I mean the games played within the division. I don't want to pick every game, but there are a couple division games out there that's going down. You got division games or division matchup between the Redskins and the Eagles. Eh, That's a good one. And then you got the Saints versus the Panthers. Eh, Another good one. And you got the just win, baby, win, baby Raiders versus the Chiefs. And then you got the Colts versus the Texans. So I'm going to start in the NFC East with the Redskins and the Eagles. I'm taking the Redskins over the Eagles. Redskins are on a three-game winning streak, looking to make it four games against the division foe. Um, The Eagles have been looking great. The young quarterback has been looking great. I mean, he went out there and carved my Bears up. Bears spent all that money on the defense, and that defense can't stop a wet paper towel. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm feeling what's going on in Philadelphia. However, I'm not feeling what's going on or what's going to go on this Sunday when they travel over to play the nation's capital football team, and that's the Washington Redskins. So I'm rolling with the Redskins over the Eagles. After that, I think I'm going to take the Saints over the Panthers. I'm not sure what's up with the Panthers. Not sure what's up with Cam. Not sure what's up with the NFC South. It seems like when the Falcons are doing great and they're hot, everyone else is trash. And when the Falcons are trash, everyone else is hot. But over the course of the last two or three years, the Panthers have been relatively decent. Great last season, but... The Buccaneers have been on a down-down slide up until, you know, drafting Jameis Winston, and he's making some things happen, but they're not where I thought they would be this year at this moment in time, and then you have the Saints and the Falcons who have just been trash, and I understand why the Saints have been trash, but I just don't understand how the Falcons have been trash. They've just the team that'll just get you where you need to be, get you where you need to be, and then fall off the face of the earth. And that's one reason why I'm not jumping on their bandwagon to support them and talk about them because a few years ago they went 5-0, 6-0, and they lost damn near every game they played after that. So I'm going to pump the brakes and I'm going to wait to see what's going to happen with the Falcons. But since we're talking about the Saints and the Panthers, I'm rolling with the Saints over the Panthers. I found out Cam Newton's not playing again. I don't think Derek Anderson will go out there and get them a quality win. Um, I just don't think he will. I mean, he had the opportunity last week, and he didn't make it happen. And he just hasn't been that guy to go out there throughout the duration of an entire game, 60 minutes, to do enough. Maybe he will this week, but I doubt it. So I'm rolling with the Saints over the uh, Saints. Over the Panthers. I was going to say like the Fal- 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 was like almost about to mix up the Falcons with the Panthers. Um, anyways, on to the AFC West. Um, and it's kind of awesome if you're in the AFC West because you just watched the Chargers 
get a quality win that they almost gave to the Denver Broncos, but the Denver Broncos wasn't ready to accept the win that the Chargers was just gift wrapped in since they've been giving presents away for the entire football season. I mean, it's not even mid-November. It's not even close to December. It's not even a week before Christmas and the Chargers are just giving presents away like it's nothing. But they, they, they changed their mind and the present that they wanted to give to the Broncos was a lump of coal. The Broncos figured out what it was, gave it back to the charge to charge win the game but now you have another division matchup in or within the AFC West and that's between those Raiders and the Chiefs and like I said just win baby win I'm taking the Raiders over the Chiefs I don't necessarily know what's going on with the Chiefs but I can say when we were doing our preseason picks and what team is going to be up what team is going to be down we call that segment our two up two down I had the Chiefs and the Raiders at the top. Um, and it's not looking like that. Um, and the only reason why I had the Chiefs because I said they were really great without Jamal Charles last season when he went down. And I figure, you know, maybe they can, you know, replicate what they had going on, but it doesn't look like it. And it seems like the third team that I thought would be the third team is right up there, number one and number two with the Raiders, and that's the Denver Broncos. And my thing with them is they didn't have a quarterback. But they had a quarterback that was able to go out there and win some games. He's been a little banged up or whatever the situation may be going on. The defense still playing at a high level, but they need to score some points. So with that being said, you have the Raiders on top in that division and the Broncos right at the top. They're like nut button heads sharing that position. But it's just looking like a division that the Raiders could win. And the Chargers are just the same old Chargers, you know, I mean, They've been the way they've been since I lived there and started living there in 2006. Um, but the last few years, they've just been bad. So I'm going to take the Raiders over the Chiefs. And my last game, my last NFL division game that I'm going to pick is going to be between the Colts and the Texans. Um, and I'm picking the Colts with the upset um, win over the Texans at home. Um, why? I don't know. I really like Andrew Luck. I know he doesn't have as much help. I know he's getting sacked like a a, 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 a gang of potatoes. I mean, he's on his butt. Um, they don't have the personnel to be a winning team like I thought they were going to do last year or like they were two years ago. So I don't know. But I look at the Colts as a team that's just going to slowly turning around, turning around, sneak to the top of that division like they had always been with Peyton Manny and also with Luck before he went down with that injury last year. I think they're just the team that's going to be the team to beat in that division until the Texans can get their defensive leader back. Um, the Jags need about another year. And, you know, I'm saying the Titans need about another year. So, you know, I think the Colts will, you know, get this win against the Texans pick up another few more wins, solidify their spot within their division, go ahead and win that division and get back to the playoffs and, you know, try to make something happen. But, you know, they don't have enough on that team to go as deep, but they do have enough on that team to win the division based on what is going on within that division and the other teams. So with that being said, I mean, that's it. The midnight hour is just about done or it is done. Um, and we're, we're, we're in the process of getting prepared for episode 18. Now, if you follow the show, you're probably like episode 18. Man, I expect you guys to be way past episode 18. But like I said, we took a little break um, and now we're back. So I'm just trying to make sure I win more games between Saturday and Sunday um, than lose more games than win, eh, whatever. But, you know, there's always a treat. There's always a prize. There's always a celebration. There's always a reward. So in my case, if I win more games or pick more winners, I'll be able to consume this nice modern times, hoppy, zesty wheat. Something I picked up from San Diego back in, that was... It was August, something I've drank a lot when I was living there. Um, and let's just say I don't pick a lot of games and I fall short. Well, then I'll go with the 
Hoppy Galaxy IPA. So you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, I'm gonna be winning no matter what. Um, and and I'm gonna have a good time. And I actually can't wait to watch these games and spend some quality time with my family. And I can't wait to hook back up with my boy Jared and we can produce and 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 and, and give you guys a great show coming up on Tuesday night, 7:30 p.m. That's Pacific Standard Time. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Charlie. You already know us to CNJ Sports and Beer Podcast. This is the Midnight Hour Saturday and Sunday College and NFL Prediction Show. Something that I wanted to do for a very long time, but I had to take a break. I'm back, and you know what? Next week is going to be better than ever. Thank you very much for rocking with me. Watch this video. Share this video. Like this video. Comment on this video. You know what? We will see you. We will see you on Tuesday. At least we hope to see you. It's not like we can like, go through the camera and have some popcorn and take a sip of your beer when you're watching us, but you never know. But we hope you guys see us start next week. And like I said, if you want to find out anything about us as far as our content, uh, what we're going to be talking about, uh, who we're going to have on the show, uh, whatever the case may be, social media, you know where you can find us, Facebook, Tumblr, Google+, YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Twitter, at CJ Sports and Beer Pod, at CJ Sports and Beer Pod, or in your search bar type, CNJ Sports and Beer Podcast. Thank you. Good night, good morning, wherever you at, however it may be. Talk to you later. Talk to you soon. Peace. I think I can put my glasses on now. The show is done though. Done though. The touchdown glasses, baby. You already know how it's going down. The touchdown glasses. I'm out.